What's up, Odoers, and welcome back. In today's video, we're going to learn how to add a new employee and how correctly inputting employee information affects other apps. For example, payroll integration pulls banking and tax information, approvals are done by who we set are responsible for specific apps, and our dashboard shows other employees where we're working each day, just to name a few. So enough talking, let's create a new employee together. I'm actually starting this tutorial in the recruitment app to show you how all of our apps are integrated. Business is booming, so we've been recruiting more carpenters. We've just hired Joanne Timber, and it's time for us to enter their information into our system. Here's Joanne's applicant card in the recruitment app. Don't worry, I go over the recruitment app in greater detail in recruitment videos, so be sure to check those out as well. So she's already accepted the job offer, signed the contract, and she's in the hired stage. All I need to do now is add her as an employee, and I can do that by clicking Create Employee here in the left-hand corner. Quick note, we're now looking at this in the employee form through the recruitment app. Since this is an employee's tutorial, I'll switch to the employee's app to show you how to finish setting up. You can continue in either app as they are fully integrated. Now I'm in the employee's app. If I wanted to create a new employee record, all I have to do is click New here in the upper left-hand corner. But since I already started the employee record in the recruitment app, I just need to update Joanne's current record. So I'll just search Joanne's name here at the top and click on her employee card. Notice how this is the exact same form that we saw in the recruitment app. Her name, position, and work email are populated using the contact information from her applicant card. And here on the right, department, job position, manager, and coach are all autofilled from the job position. In the next appraisal date field here, this is auto-populated based off of her hiring date and the appraisal schedule configured in the appraisals app. Next, we can also add a picture of Joanne by hovering over this box right here, clicking the pencil icon, and then selecting and uploading our file of her from our computer. Next, we'll add her work phone number in the work phone field. And next, we can also add any relevant tags, and we're going to add her employee tag. If we scroll down here in the resume field, this job position we hired for Joanne automatically appears under the experience section. This occurs automatically when someone is hired through the recruitment app. I want to add her carpentry certificate, so I'm just going to click add here up at the top and enter a title for her new resume line. And we can also see the employee field is already populated with her name. And for the type here, we're just going to enter this as education, since this is a typical degree. And we're just going to keep the display type on classic as well. And for the duration, we're going to enter February of 2021. And the end is going to be 2025, January 1st. And last here, we're just going to enter bachelor's degree in the description. And once that's all good, we'll just click save and close. Now this entry appears in the education section. You'll notice we also have a skill section here on the right, which was also imported from the recruitment app. I need to add her safety skills, and to do that, I'm just going to click Add in the Carpentry section. After I click Add, this Skills pop-up window appears, and the skill type is going to be set at Carpentry. And for the specific skill here, we're going to select Safety Practices. And we're also going to update her skill level from beginner to expert. And then from here, we'll just click Save and Close once again. Now I'm going to scroll up and go to the Work Information tab. And here we have the organization chart on the right. And this shows everything from her manager all the way to upper management. Here on the left, the work address is filled in automatically with our address and from, you guessed it, the recruitment app. Down below, we have our approvers section, and I'm going to assign Mitchell Admin to all of these sections. So we're going to add him to time off and expense, as well as timesheet. 
and attendance. Now, here in the remote work section, this is where I can define where Joanne is working each day. She's always working in the main factory, manufacturing wood furniture. So from Monday through Friday, I'm just gonna add main factory. And we're gonna leave Saturday and Sunday blank since that's the weekend. Scrolling down, the schedule section is also pre-configured from the jobs posting in the recruitment app. So luckily, nothing to change here. The planning section determines what shifts she can be scheduled for and affects the planning app. So in the roles here, I'm going to select furniture tools as well as furniture assembler, since those are her main two roles. And for the default role, we're going to update this to furniture assembler, since that's the majority of her job. And by selecting furniture tools in the fields above, she can be assigned to do a job with that role. It's not just the default role. All right, moving along, let's hop up into the private information tab. The private email and private phone are auto-filled from her applicant card, and I can enter her private address up here, but we're gonna skip that for now. The bank account field here must be configured or she won't get her paycheck. So I'm gonna enter an account number here, and then click Create and Edit. And we'll finish setting up her bank information in the Create Bank Account pop-up window. I'll select the big bank in the bank field here, then enter her routing number, and I also need to select her as the account holder And last, I must tick the send money toggle. And when I do, this turns to trusted. And if I don't do that, I can't write Joanne a check or direct deposit her paycheck. And of course, once we're all set with this, we'll just click save and close. Then I'll enter the work home distance, which can have some tax implications. She's 12 miles from work. So I'll type that in there and update from kilometers to miles. And I'll also enter her license plate in the private car plate field. She hasn't given me her emergency contact name yet, so I'm just going to leave this section here blank, and I'll fill that out later. Now, her family status is already correct. She is single and has zero children or dependents, so I'm going to leave that as is. But, of course, I can update this later when this changes. Scrolling back up. The citizenship section is where all of her nationality related information is held. This can be critical information for employees who may be working here on a work visa. I'm not going to enter all this information since I don't want you to see it, but I will configure our nationality field. And then I'll also enter her social security number. And since this information is related to payroll, and this is necessary when we fill out our W-2s, next in the education section, I can specify her highest level of education. She earned her bachelor's degree, so in the certificate level, I'm just gonna put bachelor. And in the field of study, I'm just gonna put carpentry. And for her school, I'm just gonna put wood college. Now, scrolling down even further, this work permit section is related to employees with a work visa or work permit. All of that information would be entered in the corresponding fields here. Joanne doesn't have one, though, so I'm going to leave this all empty. Next, scrolling back up, we're going to click into the Payroll tab, which is linked to the Payroll app. When we enter her personal information like name, marital status, and dependents, these corresponding fields are updated automatically legal name, federal tax filing status, and state tax filing status are also auto-populated. The registration number of the employee is necessary for payroll, so I'm just gonna enter her number. Here on the right, we have the W-4 form column, and this is related to all the tax information. 
I recommend working with the payroll department to ensure all these are configured correctly. The same goes for the W-2 section down here. So refer to your payroll officers or manager since they should know how to configure this section. All right, home stretch. The last section we need to configure is the settings tab. The status section relates to signing into the database. The employee type is correct. The related user field is the user in the system. Not all employees are users, but Joanne is and will be signing into this database. I already created a user for her, so I'm just going to select it in this drop down menu. If I didn't, I could quickly create one directly through here. This attendance point of sale section is related to the attendances and point of sale app. This pin code is entered when the employee signs in and out of the attendance kiosk or a POS kiosk. She told me the pin she wants to use, so I'm going to enter that here. This badge ID field is pretty cool. When I click generate, an ID number is created for me. After an ID is created, the generate button changes to a print badge button. When I click print badge, Odoo generates a PDF file for this employee. When you click save in the pop-up window, you can print this PDF on my ID printer and Joanne can use this card to sign in to work on attendances kiosk or POS kiosks. Super cool. Okay, moving on, I need to enter her hourly costs since this can affect the price of products. If it's based on the total cost of manufacturing, which includes labor, I'll enter $20. If she had a card related to an employee vehicle, like a gas card, I would enter that here in the fleet mobility card. But she doesn't have one, so we're going to keep this blank. Lastly, this ADP information section is visible because we configured the United States localization, which includes the ADP code field to work with ADP. It's important to note that depending on what localization is configured in your database, there may be different or additional sections and fields for that specific localization. So while this tutorial covers everything we see in the United States localization, keep in mind that fields pertaining to your specific localization may change what you see here. And that's it. You learned how to configure all the fields on an employee form and learn how all that information affects other applications. See you in the next tutorial where I cover onboarding. Now, get back to work.